To me, it looks like a cold-blooded, cold-hearted person. Have you ever imagined the drama that unfolds when cops find themselves in a situation where they must arrest their wives? It's a deep dive into the complicated world where law officers must navigate the delicate balance between their duty and their personal lives. Who, who showed up? Valerie Cincinnelli, a former NYPD officer, finds herself at the center of a chilling plot that could have come straight from a crime thriller. Let's explore the twists and turns of this sensational case. It all started with a relationship with all the markings of a modern love story. Valerie, a seasoned officer with a decade of service, fell for John DeRuba, who dabbled in real estate. Their romance seemed like something out of a movie. They even got matching tattoos declaring their commitment. But beneath the surface, things were far from picture perfect. You see, Valerie's family family and friends had their doubts about John. They saw him as a manipulative figure, with some even labeling him a con artist. According to them, John wasn't exactly forthcoming about his past, claiming to be an ex-FBI agent. Red flags were flying everywhere, but love, as they say, can blind even the most vigilant of eyes. It's nonsense. My daughter is absolutely innocent of this, and it will come out in court. This, this guy that she's involved with is a wacko psych. As their relationship deepened, so did the shadows lurking within it. Valerie's life took a dark turn when she found herself entangled in a sinister scheme, one that involved plotting the murders of her estranged husband and John's teenage daughter. It's the plot you'd expect from a crime novel, not real life. But here's where things get even more twisted. John, the very person Valerie trusted, was secretly working with the FBI, recording their conversations every step. What Valerie thought was a private conversation conversation between lovers turned out to be evidence against her in a court of law. Talk about a betrayal of trust. When the truth came to light, Valerie's world crashed around her. She was arrested on May 2019 and faced a slew of charges related to the murder-for-hire plot. The fallout was swift and severe. She was suspended from the force without pay and later resigned from the NYPD to distance the department from her actions. Are you Valerie Cincinnati? What's okay. going on? Might I have a seat for you, please? I'm sorry to be the one to tell you that Isaiah was found dead. <clears throat> Are you kidding me? Oh my God. I've never seen that video. You've never seen this video? No. What do you see when you watch this video? To me, it looks like a cold-blooded, cold-hearted person. I thought I was marrying somebody who protected and served for a, li for a living. Somebody who was, you know, a cop. An outstanding citizen. And instead, I got a crazed, Lunatic. Did she really think she was going to get away with this? I really believe she did. Because she went through with it. The FBI told me to sit in the car and they took glass and they put it all over on the floor here, rolled down my window, put glass all over me inside of the car and told me to hunch over into the passenger seat. Was that eerie to stage your own death? I, it haunts me every day. She's got two kids, man. And she's a police officer. Will she really do something like that? I don't know. Fast forward to April 2021, and Valerie found herself in a federal courtroom. In the end, the judge handed down a sentence of four years in prison, a far cry from the five years sought by federal prosecutors. It was a bittersweet victory for Valerie and her defense team, who saw it as a small measure of justice in a case rife with betrayal and deceit. In a wild twist of fate, Mildred found herself on the wrong side of the law, not just once, but thrice in a single morning. All thanks to her, shall we say, adventurous driving. The drama unfolded when Sergeant Garrett caught her red-handed, committing not one, not two, but three major traffic no-nos. But Mildred wasn't about to take this lying down, especially with the policeman for a husband, Sergeant Mike Green. Would this get her off the hook, right? Wrong. As Mildred pulled the My Husband is a Policeman card, hoping for some special treatment, Garrett decided to call Sergeant Green himself. Oh, no, please. I'm not in the mood for this today. Yes, I see you. I'm pulling over, buddy. It wasn't until you showed up. Can I see your license and registration, please? I suppose, if you insist. Mm 
Do you know why I pulled you over? Bored? Had nothing better to do? No, ma'am. Actually, you committed not one, not two, but three traffic violations. I did no such thing. Yes, you did. You must be seeing things. On 2nd Avenue, you made an illegal left turn. Then you ran through the stop sign on Maple Drive. And just before I pulled you over, you went down a one way, the wrong way. Nonsense. I have it on my video dash if you want to see. Oh, that won't be necessary. Look, I didn't say anything before, but since you're being so difficult, you leave with no choice. My husband is a policeman. This is that a fact? Yes, Sergeant Mike Green of Mango Park Police Department. Maybe you've heard of him? Oh, I know Sergeant Green. So I'm free to go? No, ma'am. Stay put. I'm going to give Sergeant Green a call. To everyone's surprise, Green didn't rush to his wife's defense. Instead, he confirmed the violations and even agreed she needed a lesson in safe driving. Mildred, incredulous, demanded to be let go, insisting on her impeccable driving skills and necessary lunch plans. But Sergeant Green, having had this conversation multiple times, knew better. He was adamant that Mildred must face the consequences of her actions, marking a crucial moment in their marriage and her driving career. Despite her protests and a not-so-subtle threat about dinner and donuts at home, Garrett handed her the ticket. Hey, Garrett, what seems to be the problem here? Hey, Sergeant Green, you recognize that car? I think I pulled over your wife. Oh, Mildred? Oh, Lord, what happened? She made an illegal left turn, then she ran through the stop sign, then she went down the wrong way on a one way. Oh, unbelievable. I'll be right back, let me speak to her. Okay. Hello, dear. Michael, have you resolved this issue yet? I'm late for my lunch date with Susie and Nancy. Tell me what happened. Well, nothing happened. Your buddy over there had nothing better to do, so he pulled me over. Well, according to Sergeant Garrett, you committed several traffic violations. Now, who are you going to believe? Him or me? I want you to think long and hard before you answer that question. Yes, dear. Now, let's deal with this issue so I can be on my way. You know, we spoke about this numerous times. I've told you countless times that you need to drive more carefully. Oh, please, I'm an excellent driver. Now, are you gonna deal with that sorry excuse of a police officer or what? Please, sit back in your car. I'll speak to the sergeant. Oh, good. I'll see you back at home tonight, darling. Well, that sure looked like fun. Oh, you have no idea. Sarge, it's up to you. I suppose I could always let it go with a warning. I've spoken to her numerous times about her driving. Oh, I wouldn't even get in the car when she's behind the wheel. She's a maniac. So what do you want to do? Well, she ran a stop sign, and she drove the wrong way up a one-way. Don't forget about the illegal left turn. Oh, unbelievable. I'll have it on my dash cam if you want to see it. All right. Well, it's just as you described it was. Not that I ever doubted you, Garrett. I understand. Oh, I just, seeing her drive in action is scarier than how you described. Oh, this is a pickle. You can sure say that again. It's your decision. Garrett, give her the ticket. Are you sure? Yes, it's the only way she's going to learn. Before I start writing this ticket, are you 100% absolutely positively sure that you want me to write your wife a ticket? I'm sure. Sometimes the right decision is the one that is the most difficult to make. She committed multiple traffic violations. It's our duty as police officers to give her the citation. All right. Hello again. I assume I'm free to go then. Here you go, ma'am. What's this? 
It's a citation for multiple infractions you committed today. The information is on the ticket. Are you out of your mind? Didn't you talk to my husband? Yes, ma'am. It was his decision. Have a nice day. The situation escalated quickly when Mildred, in a fit of anger, assaulted the officer, leading to her arrest. The ordeal ended with Sergeant Green contemplating the wisdom of pressing charges while Mildred cooled her heel, regretting her actions and possibly reconsidering her driving habits. Ma'am, would you please calm down? You are under arrest for assaulting a police officer. Garrett, please open that door. Now you sit in there, think about what you just did. Just wait till we get home tonight. You are in so much trouble. No dinner for you tonight. Uh, I'm not cooking for the rest of the week. And I'm not buying any more donuts ever. You okay? Well, that sure went worse than I expected. <gasps> no kidding. Obviously, I'm not going to press charges. Are you really going to take her down to the station? I haven't decided yet. I want to wait until she cools down before I make any decisions. Good thinking. Hey, Garrett. Do you mind if I come over to your place tonight for dinner? Sure, I don't mind. In a humorous turn of events, Garrett invited Green over for dinner, stepping in as the evening's unlikely hero and makeshift chef. On November 12, 2017, a routine patrol took a surprising turn for a police officer who responded to reports of a physical altercation in a local park. Upon arrival, only one individual was present at the scene, which ultimately worked in his favor. The lone man recounted to the officer that he had been exercising in the park when another man suddenly assaulted him. Fortunately, a passerby intervened, preventing the altercation from escalating further. Although the victim did not disclose the exact reason for the attack, the officer had a hunch about the underlying cause. It became evident to the officer that the victim had been at the park with a woman, presumably his companion. Who, who showed up? My husband. What's your husband's name? Joshua. Huh? Joshua. Josh is in APD, Josh. So, what happened? Uh. Someone ran down the hill, I was sitting here exercising. 30-year-old male, uh, multiple blows to the head, uh, swelling on the side of the face. He is conscious and breathing. Just came down to jump to me and started hitting me in the head. Do you know him? Up. Yeah. Okay. And from what I understand, this is his wife? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So, you had any beef with him? Any issues? Uh, there has been an ongoing issue. Nothing physical until now. Okay. You want to press charges? No? Well, we're going to have EMS. And that's not really you. Well, I mean, you, you're pretty red and you got a lot of bumps and bruises around your head. And I think he took my car. I don't know if it was in my pocket. No, where the hell it is. Okay. As they waited, the officer conducted a cognitive test on the victim, yielding a surprising revelation. He was mentally sound despite the traumatic experience. To the officer's astonishment, Stephanie revealed that her husband, Joshua Malachi, was an officer with the Albuquerque Police Department. Joshua's troubled history, including a recent suspension for a DWI crash, added complexity to the case. The officer recognized the need for additional guidance and radioed for a supervisor to assist in navigating the delicate situation. You know what of the week in the show? Sunday. You know what month we're in? November. What year is it? 2017. Who's president? That's <laughs> right. How many quarters in a dollar? You have any medical issues? Allergic to anything? Did you lose consciousness at all? Did he just use his hands, feet? I think just his hands, yeah. Good, buddy? Yeah. He's not here and he doesn't want to press charges anyway. It's an ongoing issue. It's just never been violent. Now it's violent. All right. And I think it may be because the chick that's over here is the wife. Of the other dude? Of the suspect. Oh. So it might be a, you're sleeping with my wife, but he was over here working out. And the guy just came down here and beat the crap out of him. So. Uh, I'm head over to RNS.
Okay. Um, on what Should happened? I've never been in one fight in my entire life. Never okay. Been hit. So, never. if you feel like this is an ongoing thing and it's just escalated to this, nine times out of ten, I can't even say that. Sometimes it'll escalate even worse. Like, he may put you in the hospital. Or worse. He's not right in the head. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a chat with her and, and find out the situation and what's going on. So. So once EMS gets here, we'll have another chat. Josh is in APD, Josh. David, 635 PD. Do you have a supervisor respond out here, please? Negative code. So I'll ask you again, Sean, do you want to press charges? I mean, it's totally up to you. If you don't feel safe, if you feel like this is going to progress on some, it's going to get written up anyway. And um, there's going to be a report made and it's going to go, I take it you know who her husband is. Yeah. So it's going to go up through the department. Yeah. Too, right? yeah. It's going to go up through the department and it's going to go to internal affairs because he still is an employee. But if you don't feel safe, I mean, even after this, if something else happens, call us back. Um, I'm going to give you a case and a CAD number and you can reference it off of, off of that. But the decision is totally yours. Awesome. I guess that's what you told me because she called me frantic on the phone saying he just left drunk in a car and he's looking for you on my phone. I wasn't living at the place I'm living now, somewhere else, but, uh, okay. Because we've been having an affair for months now, and, uh, he knows about it, and she just lies to him that it's not happening, and it's still happening. She okay. can't leave him because she's scared. But, I'm just a nice guy. Okay. It was revealed that three months before the incident, Joshua and Stephanie had a heated argument regarding her affair with the victim. This confrontation escalated when, under the influence of alcohol, Joshua recklessly drove his police car into the victim's residence, resulting in a crash. Six months later, Joshua resigned from the police department, marking a tumultuous period for the couple. Despite being unwanted by the victim, Stephanie's presence at the park highlighted the complex dynamics at play in their relationship. On a dramatic day in August 2023, Trooper Davis and Michelle's rocky relationship hit a breaking point. Davis, off-duty but not off-guard, thought he was doing the right thing for Michelle, who seemed lost in a sea of distress. She had texted him about driving off a cliff, a cry for help wrapped in a metaphor. But Davis saw it as a red flag and made a bold move to get her psychiatric help, thinking he was saving her. When he confronted her, things spiraled out of control fast. Michelle was shocked, asking Davis what in the world he thought he was doing, her frustration boiling over. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. 27 years of my life, this has never happened to me. Ever. Four months after meeting you, I get tackled. That's real. Just great. What is wrong with you? I don't need help. I need to get away from you. No. No. This is normal. I don't care what anybody says. Can I please stand up? Okay. I'm not going to any jail. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm not going anywhere. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. What is wrong with you? Would you do this? <laughs> Would you? You just called the cops on me. You're a cop. You're a f thief. What the f is wrong with you? <laughs> I've lived all over the world, and not one time has anyone ever come up, tackled me, attacked me, and called the cops on me for existing in the woods. And never, ever. All because of the consequences of your actions. You don't like. That's not. You feel like you should have any form of power. But if you want to sit on me, 
And you call the cops on me for what? For what? Oh, because I'm around a sociopath who says he can do whatever he wants, him and her objects will do whatever he wants. I'd be happy to tell them that. I'm, you're, 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 you're insane. You're absolutely insane. You're insane. Like, and then you paint me to look insane. As I'm sitting on the ground and my head slammed into this and that. By a cop who called the cops on me. Do you realize how insane you are? Can you please get off of me? You, you can't just walk up to someone and attack them. And then call the cops on them. So you're gonna, like, uh-huh. That's not okay. Get off of me. You just called the cops on me for existing. <sighs> what the f is wrong with you? Like, I, I don't understand what the f I was thinking. What the f are you doing? I don't need help. I just need to get away from you. That's the problem. <sighs> I mean, I don't know why you don't like when you're truth. I just tell it back to you. Like, I don't know why you don't like that. That's, this is unacceptable behavior. <sighs> totally unacceptable. What the f***? Like, come on, dude. <sighs> what is wrong with you? Who does that? You don't give a sh about anything except yourself. And if this is caring, you have a very f***ed delusional way of expressing it. Get off of me. I didn't do anything. You. Davis, determined to see his plan through, didn't back down even as Michelle begged him to understand she hadn't done anything to deserve this. The ordeal turned into Michelle's worst nightmare as she was handcuffed and taken away, feeling utterly betrayed by the man she trusted. Suddenly, she found herself facing serious charges, thrown into a legal maze she never saw coming. But Michelle wasn't about to let this break her. Despite the emotional and physical toil, she stood strong, fighting to clear her name and take back control of her life. A tree like a human being, please. Can you do that? Can I stand here and put my things together? You can watch me all you want. You can watch me all you want. That's not fair. And I didn't do anything wrong to get away from you. I don't understand. And I can't relax. You just called the guns on me for existing. I didn't like your droop. Jesus, dude. Come on. What the fuck? Why are you treating me like I'm a criminal? I didn't do it. I can't just want to be able to stand. You back and find out where they are. Mm. I, I just want to be able to stand. This isn't fair. I'll call them. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything wrong. No. I didn't do anything wrong. 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 You can't take me against my will. I didn't do anything wrong. I can't make up that I assaulted you. I just didn't agree with your truth. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. I just left. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand. Please, stop. Please stop so I can get the hair out of my face. That would be really nice. Please. What? Can I just get the hair out of my face? Can I stand here? Can I just stand and get my arms back? Jesus Christ. What the f***? What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? I didn't do anything.
it. What the f You didn't do anything wrong. Can I, you're, you're around my stomach again. Her story is a gripping reminder of how easily trust can be shattered and the scary power dynamics that can emerge in relationship. It's a story of resilience, a battle for justice, and a fight to keep one's spirit unbroken in the face of incredible odds. Through these riveting accounts, we witness the complex and often heartbreaking intersections of love, law, and duty. Each story unveils the profound challenges and ethical dilemmas faced by law enforcement officers when their personal lives collide with their professional responsibilities. If you found these stories as captivating as we did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more gripping tales where the heart meets the badge.